What's up, y'all? It's your boy Tobias here, and I am back to do my six-month update on my weight loss journey since I've had the gastric bypass. So if you are interested in hearing about what's been going on these past six months, stick around and let's jump into the video. Okay, first things first, let's get this out of the way because I know all of y'all gonna be asking, why does Tobias sound weird? Why does he got a lisp? It's because I got these damn things in my mouth because I'm getting my teeth done or whatever. So, yeah, talking with these in my mouth is interesting, okay? But let's talk. First things first, I'm in my car. Pay that no mind. I got a wheelchair in the back because I'm taking one of my cousins somewhere today. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to come on. I didn't want to make this no fancy video. That's why I'm doing it in my car. And I just wanted to talk to y'all. have a real honest conversation about what my first six months post-op have been since I had my gastric bypass. So first things first, let's talk about my journey in relations with food post-op of having the gastric bypass. For those of you that are not aware or who have not seen any of my other videos, I will post the playlist right here. I recorded everything from the beginning of the process all the way up until today currently. Everything from what it took in order to get the surgery, all of the things that I had to do, um, the different diets that I had to go on per se, um, the different blood work test, um, the surgery itself, and then the different phases that I had to go through in those first, you know, I would say that first month and a half. So if you want to get caught up, if you're new to my channel, you haven't seen any of those videos, just click on that playlist. All of those videos are there. Let's talk about the food. So for me, one of the biggest things that I was concerned about was this whole idea of what they call dumping syndrome, which essentially is pretty much exactly what it, what you would think it is, is exactly what it is. Meaning... You put food in your body, your body says absolutely not, and it wants to immediately get rid of it. Sometimes dumping syndrome can make people feel lightheaded. It'll make you feel very nauseous. You immediately have to go to the bathroom. Sometimes you'll throw up, you know? So it can be really, really rough for a lot of people. I am extremely fortunate that I have not experienced that at all, okay? I have not had dumping syndrome at all. Um, now, mind you, I made sure that I kind of followed the rules and didn't really venture outside of what it was I was supposed to do. So I think that did help. But for some people, even when you follow the rules, it can still happen. It really is a person-to-person -person type scenario. So with everything that I say within this video, and just like I'm sure I said in my past videos... You really have to take a lot of this with a grain of salt, you guys, because every single person's experience is going to be so incredibly personalized and different that you cannot base your decisions on getting the surgery, how you're going to approach the surgery, how long it's going to take you to get the surgery, how long you're going to heal from the surgery, what you'll be able to eat after the surgery. You can't base any of that stuff off of what someone else's experience was like. And I say that because me going into the procedure, hell, I was terrified because listening to what everybody else was dealing with, I thought I wasn't going to be able to drink water. I thought I wasn't going to be able to really eat anything. I thought I was going to have dumping syndrome every day. You know, all of the things that I was terrified of never even happened to me. It's all the other random shit that I had to deal with and still currently dealing with that seem like ain't nobody else dealing with. So you see what I'm saying? Everything is going to be incredibly personalized uh, based on you, your health history, and all that type of stuff. Um, my weight starting off at my highest weight was 435 pounds. Um, August the 12th of 2021... I got my procedure done. My starting weight was 375 pounds. That was my starting weight. My weight as of today, I got, is 2 
282 pounds. Bitch, I'm out here doing it. I'm out here doing it, okay? So I am living in this idea that I have lost about 153 pounds so far. I have a long way to go, but in hindsight, I really don't because I really only want to lose about another 75 pounds or so. And I've already lost about 153. So I'm very excited about where my body is so far. Um, now, a lot of you will ask, have you been working out consistently? Have you been, you know, doing any strict diets? Y'all know me. I'm going to keep it 100% with y'all. When I first got out of the procedure, as you guys know, I was doing a lot of walking. Walking was my saving grace. Number one, because you kind of have to. The walking is going to make sure that your blood is circulating so that you don't end up with any blood clots or anything of that nature. It'll also help with just the initial flow of getting your body back in order, your hormones back aligned and all those type of things. For me, that kind of worked out perfectly at the time because it was fall. So it wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. It was the perfect time for me to get that ball rolling. Well, as you guys know, then my health kind of took a weird turn, not in a very bad way, but in a sense of my body was inflamed from the inside out. Okay. That's pretty much what's happening to me. And still currently I'm dealing with inflammatory issues. And so that was causing sciatic nerve damage in my legs. It felt like certain days I couldn't walk. My body was swollen and it was a lot. It wasn't so unbearable that I was bedridden, but there were definitely some days where I was like, uh, uh, I don't feel like doing nothing. I'm not walking because I can't even sit for more than 10 minutes. Like there were moments when I couldn't even drive my car because I couldn't even sit in my car, y'all, for more than 10 to 15 minutes at a time because my legs would just seize up. And the reason why I want to talk about all of the bad stuff now is because I want y'all to realize by the end of this video, you're going to realize that it was all worth it. So that's why I want to keep it 100 with y'all because you have got to know going into this, it is not going to be smooth sailing, okay? Even though there's a lot of things that could have happened to me that didn't, the things that did happen definitely weighed me down mentally and physically. So it's important for me to make sure that I'm honest with you guys in regards to what exactly that journey was, what it was for me in regards to how I moved past it and what I'm currently doing to try to pro propel me towards kind of getting over this hump. Um, so I was dealing with that. And at the time I thought, my God, this is never going to go away. It was the worst thing ever. And I thought, this is... <laughs> This shit is for the birds. Well, now looking back, I'm six months post-op and all of that nerve damage stuff that I was dealing with with my legs is all gone. It kind of literally just kind of dissipated. What I'm dealing with now is a major inflammatory issue. And as some of you may or may not know, when you have the gastric bypass, you cannot have any type of anti-inflammatory medication. Okay, no NSAIDs, none of that. So <laughs> long story short, all of the damn medicine that I would need that could honestly fix all of this like that, I can't even take because it would put me in a damn hospital. So that's the reason why it's very difficult for me to fix what I need to fix because I have to do it a very homeopathic way. There are certain medications that I am taking. There's certain things that I have to watch what I'm eating and all of that. And then I also kind of just had to get myself in the mindset of I got to live my life. Because there's a possibility that this might not go away no time soon. And I'm not about to sit and just dwell in the fact that I have these little issues. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but my finger, you see this little hump? My finger here is swollen. So this finger here, I can barely use. You guys can kind of see that hump there. This finger is swollen. It stays swollen. It doesn't fluctuate up and down. It's been stuck like this now for probably going on a month. Same thing with my thumb. This has drastically gone down because at one point, this whole thing was completely inflamed. It's gone down, but the tenderness is still very much there. Um, at one point in time, I thought it was an arthritis type of situation, and that's just not what it was. Um, it is all 
inflammatory issues. So I am on a medication now that we're going to try to see if that's going to kind of calm things down. I am still able to live my life. It does make it difficult for me to lift up certain things. It does make it difficult for me to like, you know, open a bottle of water. But, you know, you kind of just have to adjust. You can't let those things stop you and you become completely defeated because let me tell you it's very easy to fall into that trap there were definitely moments where i was like you know what i'm sick of this and it was driving me nuts but then i had to realize bitch you woke up today okay you can walk you can breathe you can still eat you can still drink get up do what you got to do and keep moving forward so essentially that's what i've had to do over these last couple of months so food wise there aren't really many things that I can't eat. There are many things that I shouldn't eat. Okay, keyword. There are lots of things that I shouldn't eat, but there aren't many things that my body hasn't been able to handle. Okay. Within my first six months, I have been able to eat bread. I limit it completely. It's not often that I do. And when I do, I try to eat Dave's Killer Bread, and it's typically one slice, and I'll make that into a sandwich. Or if I do a wrap, it'll have to be a spinach wrap or a very, very low carb wrap or something that is extremely high in fiber and in protein. Everything that I eat nowadays has to be focused solely on getting in as much protein as possible because... I can't eat but so much. So in one typical setting, you know, me eating a full meal is never really going to happen. And if I'm going to eat a full meal, like a full size plate, trust and believe it will take hours to do so. I have to take multiple breaks. So typically I make sure that I eat as much of the protein first. Then I move over to the vegetable. And then if I decide to have a carb of some kind, I'll then attempt to do that. So that I don't fall into the trap of ignoring that theme of protein, then the vegetable, then the carb. I try to limit how much or how often I even put the carb on the plate to begin with. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of my, my motto. Uh, the foods that I don't do well with, I will say pasta. Not because it makes me sick, but because I get full within two bites. So why even bother with it? Um, rice, I can eat rice, but that's also something that I shouldn't really eat. So I try to really, really limit myself on that. Um, bread, like I said, I can do fine with. Chicken, I'm okay with. Fish, I haven't eaten a lot of fish, strangely enough, but I know that I am okay with it because I have had it periodically. Pork, I'm okay with as long as it's cooked extremely soft um, and it's not a lot. Red meat, okay. Now, I actually just had my very first piece of steak last night and it was little cubes and it was only three little cubes because I had hibachi. Today, I feel totally fine. Last night, I felt fine. I didn't have any digestive issues. So I'm feeling okay with it. But once again, there are a lot of things that I've kind of been limiting myself on because I know that my stomach is only but so big. So I don't want to fill my stomach with a bunch of crap that's going to take forever to digest. Now, I know a lot of y'all want to ask the question, what about snacks, T.Y.? What about snacks? Yes, I do fine with chips. I don't do sweets, okay? I don't even waste my time with that. Now, let's talk about the whole sugar thing. In regards to sugar, I do not eat anything that has added sugar. Nothing. My ice cream is either sugar-free or no sugar added. If I'm going to eat a candy of some kind, it is no sugar added. It's all natural sugars. If I'm going to eat a chip, it needs to be baked and I need to extremely limit myself on how much I'm going to have of that. Drinks, I do not drink any regular juice whatsoever. I have not had a sip of a soda or any carbonated drink since the procedure. Carbonated drinks, I probably will never be able to have again. And honestly, I don't care. What I drink the most of nowadays is water, crystal light, and Minute Maid Zero Sugar. They have a fruit punch, a lemonade, and a mango. I haven't been able to get my hands on the mango, but the other two I love. And they also have 
a raspberry lemonade, Minute Maid, and it's called Zero Sugar. Lovely. But even that, you want to limit yourself to those. You don't want to get in the habit of just drinking that just to be drinking it because it does have other stuff in it. Um, so, you know, overall, food-wise, I have been doing good. Uh, it hasn't been, you know, that big of a struggle as far as getting in food now like it was in the beginning. In the beginning, honey, I could barely eat any damn thing. Now I'm able to get in at least two solid meals and then like a smaller one in the middle of the day. Um, as far as my body is concerned now, like I said, I'm dealing with the inflammatory issues. I will be sure to insert some side, you know, some videos of myself so that you can see my stomach from the side and the back. I'll include that stuff here so that you guys can kind of see what's going on there. As you guys can see, my stomach has definitely come down. Um, I am still working on different areas of my body. I will now that I'm at the six month mark, will be trying to incorporate getting my butt into the gym because now is a very important stage. Now, for some people, some people are able to do this at a much earlier stage, but because of the inflammatory issues I was going through, it wasn't possible. It was making working out for me damn near impossible. So I want to now really focus on toning up my chest, my arms, my stomach, my legs, you know, so I can really start to tone those things up. So while I'm in the process of losing this last 75, 80 pounds, I can be also toning so that I'm not losing a lot of muscle mass. Um, one of the other major questions that I always get is, do I feel like the surgery was worth it? Absolutely. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Do I feel like um, this journey was easy? No. Absolutely not. Nothing about this journey is easy, okay? No matter how much things could have been worse, even on your best days, it still work. Because mentally, you have to remind yourself of the things that you are no longer allowed to do. You cannot go into this procedure thinking that you'll still be able to come back on the other side with your same old habits. It'll never work. I can promise you. You are going to lose weight because that's just the natural part of what's going to happen after the surgery. But trust me, you, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, oh, you will gain the weight back. Okay? So... Don't go through all of this stuff to get the surgery if you know damn well you're not really actually ready to put in the work. And the one thing that I will say that I remind myself every day, and especially for those of you that are considering doing it, make sure that you are mentally ready. Put aside physically. Put aside all the other shit. Put aside financially. You have got to make sure you are mentally ready. Because you have to be so willing and ready to do this procedure for yourself that you have to understand there are going to be days when you are going to be alone. There are going to be days when you are going to be physically in pain that no one else will be able to help you with, that you have to deal with alone. Whether you have a significant or other or not, trust me, I'm telling you. There are going to be moments when you're not even going to want to be around people. So you have to make sure that you are mentally ready for what's to come. Um, because as you change, that does not mean that the people around you are going to be ready to change with you. There are people that are always going to see you as the plus size person. There are people that are only going to see you as, you know, the funny big guy, the funny big girl. Uh, the person that isn't reliable, the person that isn't wanting to be active. You know, th there are people that are not going to be willing to see you as the new person that you're becoming. And that's going to be very discouraging to you. But you got to remember, you ain't doing it for their ass. You're doing it for yourself. Okay. So don't let that deter you. Um, other than that, you guys, I'm doing well. 
I will do a what I eat in a day video soon. I told you guys that I was going to hold off on a lot of these videos until I got to the six month mark. Now that I'm here, I will do this video, you know, just letting you guys know how I'm doing. I will post the video on typically what I eat in a day and I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all so y'all can really see what I eat in a day because it's not going to be just spinach and, and, and boiled chicken because that ain't the case, okay? Um, and that's it, you know? This journey is long from over. Like I said, you know, the first year to two years um, play a big, big part um, in your journey with having the gastric bypass. So, you know, I'm far from done. This will be a lifelong journey for me, of course. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else is to come. Yes, it's great to physically look different. But baby, when you mentally start feeling different and your body physically starts feeling different, that's when you go, no, oh, I did that, okay? Because that is when you start to really realize that, okay, I made the right decision. I, I did this because I knew that I wanted to live the last half of my life healthy. I did this because I wanted to live the last half of my life not making up excuses for why I can and can't do this. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, I'm going to get out of here. I'm not going to ramble anymore. I thank you guys so much for all of your support and all of your messages, your letters, your emails. Um, I am happy that I have been able to inspire other people to even consider getting the procedure done. Um, you know, I try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. If you guys do have more questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Um, I'm looking forward to all of the things that I got going on coming up in my life. Y'all have no idea. And I am so incredibly sorry to all of y'all who are subscribed to my channel that are not getting notified when I post videos. I don't even know what to do at this point. That's the real reason why, you know, a lot of people are starting to leave this platform because it is becoming very clear that they are losing control of the algorithm. And because of that, not only are the content creators missing out on a lot, but you guys also are. Because I have people messaging me saying, that they thought I stopped posting videos damn near two or three months ago and had no idea. And to me, that is completely asinine. I just, I don't, so this platform is, <laughs> stay tuned, honey, okay? Um, but beyond that, I'm gonna get my butt out of here. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure y'all give this video a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, once again, and you want to follow any of the other uh, videos that I posted in regards to getting this procedure done. Like I said, I do have a playlist available so that you guys can check all that stuff out. Stay tuned for upcoming videos. And until the next time, y'all baby, stay cute and take care. Bye, y'all.